Hey y'all, it's Mary. It is uh, Stamps and Lingers, and it is Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and I am very, very happy to have you join me tonight. So that was a really awkward introduction. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I've been running this weekend, so um, we will go ahead and get started. And this is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of. Let me just double check that we're doing some transmitting here. It looks like it is. Hey, Ann, I see you made it on. Thank you. And it looks like any second now I'm going to see if I'm transmitting. Hang on a minute, you guys. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we are. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Amy. Glad to see you again. Um, had a great time at the meeting today. I hope I hope everybody gets a chance to meet with a super upline and a super team sometime. All right, so anyway, um, I'm going to quit my rambling. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, this is the card I gave you the sneak peek of. It uses actually several different um, thinlet sets and a stamp set. And more to the point, this is a really good sneak peek of the new Petals and More Thinlets. Uh, that is what this die cup is from, and this is in the Occasions catalog. Uh, the stamp set that goes with it, is bundled with it, is called Petal Palette. It's a beautiful stamp set. It's two a uh, two-case set um, with wonderful sentiments and some really beautiful kind of watercolory images. Hey, Jean. Hey, Barbara. Glad you could come. And Sharon and Janet. Yay! Hi, Paula. Good to see you as it were. So anyway, this is a wonderful little set. Um, it's a clear or wood set and it is bundled with this 10 piece petals and more thinlets. And you can see, I mean, just the thinlets themselves are beautiful and, and the die cuts, uh, this, this die cut is the only one I've used so far, but I really, really like it. So anyway, this card, interestingly, and I had intended to get the catalog over here. Um, <laughs> I, I saw this idea in a Coldwater Creek catalog. This was a, a home plaque with a kind of a cable knit embossed bird on it. And uh, if you look at my blog post tomorrow, you'll see it. I've put a picture of that catalog in there. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. And Karen and Patricia, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, so I took it a little step further because, well, you know, cards. And I used some Pretty Pines uh, pieces and some a bow and then a sentiment from the musical season stamp set which oh by the way folks is retiring so if you like this stamp set uh, you need to get it now and on the inside I stamped the leaf image from Petal Palette and I'm going to show you how I made that look like wood so let us get started shall we I'm going to put this aside and put these aside for now and hopefully I can find it. Hey Jacqueline, good to see you. I'm glad you were able to find a computer that worked. And Patricia, nice of you to join me. I appreciate it. All right, so here is what we're going to be using today. Now, I've done a little bit of die cutting ahead of time because, I mean, seriously, how many times can you watch me run something through? Uh, the big shot but this is the beautiful let me put it against this wood set this is the beautiful die cut that comes from the petals and more thinlets I mean seriously that is just gorgeous couple of those on a card front with a sentiment that could be all you needed to make a beautiful little simple card then I've got a couple of uh, pieces from my favorite pretty pines thank the Lord it is not retiring and I cut a couple of pine boughs, and this is from the Merry Little Christmas DSP. And when you see the blog post, you're going to see I said two in with the uh, black and old olive plaid. You can use whichever of those those DSP pieces that that you like. I just liked it where it kind of lightened it up and, and gave it a little bit of texture. So I'm going to set those aside for now. Um, we've got some wood textured DSP. This is the card front. And I did not cut any cherry cobbler, so when it gets time for that, I'll have to cut them. This is the card front, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I have a an inner liner, which is the same size. Then I have a slightly smaller than the card front piece. 
it's going to go behind the card front. And I've already embossed this in the Cable Knit Dynamic Teeth. And um, you guys know how wonderful that is. It gives a beautiful, beautiful three-dimensional uh, embossing image. So it's really nice. Hey, Sue. Good to see you. And Jean and Jacqueline. Uh, yes, Jacqueline, you are absolutely correct. Donna, hey, how are you? Petal, the petal palette is going to be a quick, a quick seller, I'm pretty certain. All right, got an envelope, and then my card base is Early Espresso. It's four and a quarter by 11, and it is scored and folded at five and a half inches. All right, so all of that will be on the blog post tomorrow. And then at some point, I probably need to cut a cherry cobbler mat and that will be at four and five and a quarter why don't i just do that now since i'm gonna need it and what and what is the point in waiting right so finn and i spent the day up north having um well i think actually hey connie and karen i think actually he I had more fun than he did because he slept through the whole thing. I don't know. But we were at the Amy's Ink and Crew meeting, and it was wonderful. There were nine of us there, and everybody wanted to pet him, and they did, and he loved it. Um, and you guys, he was so good. I mean, Sue and Amy, you can tell me if I'm lying, but he was so good. He was excited to see everybody, and he was sweet. And then he laid down and had a nap. And then he got up to see what everybody was doing. And then he laid down and had a nap. So he was a very, very good boy. And I, I hope he'll get to go again because it was good for him and, and it was a lot of fun. All right. So let us, let us commence, people. Let us commence. All right. So the first thing I did, here's the image that we're going with. First thing I did was to stamp some of the leaves from the Petal Palette stamp set. Um, in Whisper White and Craft Whisper White ink. Okay, so I've got my pad here. And y'all know these pads now come uninked, so you buy the uninked pad and the refill together and you put your ink on it. And you do kind of want to keep these a little bit juicy. In fact, I may need to put a little, add a little more as we go along. We're going to see here. So I'm going to use this leaf set. Amy, it was. And he didn't even eat any paper. That is correct. He was he was just as good a boy as I could have ever asked for a little 18-month-old Aussie puppy. Okay, so I'm just going to ink this up good. <clears throat> and this is not really rocket science, folks. I'm just going to stamp it. And you see it's very bright. It will fade as it dries. And we'll just do some here. So I did this three times. <laughs> Sue, he was pretty excited to see everybody. There is no doubt about it. I, I'm not sure that his little tail, his tail may be sprained from wiggling. I'm not sure. Okay, here's a tip. Whisper White ink, the Craft ink. Takes a hot second to dry. So, <laughs> no, actually, Amy, there was no peeing at all, which was amazing because I thought as excited as he got, he was going to do that for sure. So, if y'all don't have the uh, heat tool from Stampin' Up, uh, get it. I resisted forever and ever and ever because I had an old heat gun from like a thousand years ago, and by golly, I was going to use it. But it only had one speed, one speed, one temperature, and that was high and hot. And so it was awesome for embossing. But it wasn't so great for doing this right here, which is helping stubborn ink dry. So it has two sets. I should show him on the video. Hang on just a second, and I am going to, uh, I'll get him over here in just a little bit. He's sleeping right now. It was a very big day, so he's awfully tired. Uh, so anyway, the cool thing about the Stampin' Up! heat tool is it has two settings. You can hear I'm on low right now. There's high. I use that to emboss. And the low is to help dry the ink. Because it does take a second. And I don't want you to have to wait that long. And it's really kind of, you know, we can't really do much else until it dries. So we're going to go like this. Uh, 
little finger test. Here's a tip. Don't finger test like this. Or you'll discover that it's not quite dry by having it smeared all over the place. Alright. So why don't we, while this is drying, let's see if Mr. Finmeister... Uh, it's, it warps it just a little bit, but you can just turn it over and help it unwarp a little if you need to. But it's not very significant. Anytime you heat paper, you're going to change the, the tension on the strands of the paper. So it really doesn't matter, but you can see it, it came back out pretty quickly. Yes, in fact, you are watching me cry. All right, it takes a hot minute, Kathy, if we're going to get all picky. Hang on. We'll do the we'll do the Finn introduction. Hang on just a minute. Finny win. Come here, Finn. Okay, so this is going to get bumpy because I'm not going to take my camera out of the stand. I'm just going to pick the stand up. Come here, bud. Come here. All right, everybody, say hello. Here, foot. It's okay. Come here. Come here. It's okay. He's not sure about the stand. Come here, bud. Come on. It's okay. Come here. Here. Here, 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 there we go, here he is, okay, here he is, okay, can you see him, hey Finny Wynn, and there's Finn everybody, Finn Chewy, he had a very big day, so he's kind of a tired Australian Shepherd right now, but you know what they say, okay, bye bye, go back to bed, yes. Tired Aussie is a good Aussie. Actually, I think that may be true about all dogs. All right, and there we are back. I did need to get some treats. I was holding this giant stand up and he was pretty confident I was getting ready to do something very bad to him. Cause you know, I beat him on a pretty regular occasion. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean off my stamped right quick because I don't need it with the white anymore and I will need it later. Thank you, Patricia. He is a sweet, sweet dog. There is just no doubt about it. Um, and smart, smart, smart. You can just watch him learn and stuff. He's, he's actually quite a large amount of smarter than I am. Quite a large... You know what I'm trying to say. He's a heck of a lot smarter than his mom. That is what I was attempting to say, but it was not coming out. All right, so let's, ah, it's getting close. So I'm going to do a little bit of pat, 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 just to kind of get that last little bit out. So you can either really heat tool it or you can do it and set it aside and, you know, go make dinner. It just takes a minute, but it's worth it. It's worth it in the end, I promise. Okay. All right. So there we go. I'm going to bring the big shot over because I wanted to give it just a little more texture even than in the, that the wood tex wood textures DSP gave. So I embossed it in my hardwood or my pine wood planks, uh, dynamic textured impression embossing folder. So remember, the embossing side is where it's printed. So I just laid it in the folder. And when you use these dynamic teeths, you only use one cutting plate. You take the thin die adapter out, and you can put the cutting plate on under or on top, whichever is easiest for you. I end up doing it about half one way and half the other. Okay, so that is now embossed, and all that really did was just add another layer of texture. So we got color, we got texture, it's a good thing. Now we'll keep the big shot out, because now I'm going to go ahead and get our bird in there, and bir the bird came from the annual catalog birds and blooms thinlets all right and I played with a couple of them before I got the one I like and this one was the one I ended up with so we're going to put him 
right about there. I wanted, you know, extra space. You can see the original. I wanted space at the bottom for my uh, decorations and my sentiment. So we'll be sure we've got that. And then we'll just run him through like so. This is an easy little card, you guys. I mean, it's got steps. There's no doubt that it has steps. I'm not even going to try to blow, blow smoke up your skirt. But it doesn't have so many steps, and none of them are difficult. So that should alleviate your fears. And you should make this card. All right. Mr. Big Shot can go back. All righty here. Yes, Karen, you're going to want that. Um, I think you will like Birds and Blooms. Okay, so now this is ready to put on my embossed panel. And I'm going to do that with a really large number of Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to use regular size and mini size. And then these little extra pieces from, from the sides. So... Bear with me, and let's uh, let's dimensionalize this little guy, because you really kind of want to keep him very supported around his edges. I'm assuming it's a he. Could of course be a she. Never seen a cable knit embossed bird, but I suppose it's possible. All right, and then I'm gonna just take my snips. Now you could also use the foam adhesive strips but I didn't because I just like to use these ends. They're handy. But be generous because this is what's holding him up to get that dimensional look on your card. Like that. And we all like to use all the little pieces, don't we? Yes, of course we do. Okay. And then we'll put some around his little front. I hope, Karen, that nobody wastes them because I suppose it's possible people could look at them and not realize that they're just as dimensional as everything else. One has to make that assumption, right? Okay, so he's pretty well supported. So now I'll put, I'm going to put more dimensionals around the outside. You guys know me, I do like my dimensionals. No such thing as too many dimensionals in, in Mary's book. Which is why I should own stock in dimensional ink, wherever these come from. All right, so now we're gonna put these onto that cable knit embossed Yes, ma'am, Paul, it certainly could be a shaker card. If you were going to make a shaker card with this, I think you would want to use the foam uh, strips so that you have a solid spot to keep your shakers in. But at some point, I am going to have to step over to my other spot and grab the catalog that is the... Uh, <laughs> that was the inspiration for this. So I think it's true that you can tell you're a card maker when you see cards and all sorts of stuff everywhere you go, right? Um, we saw it, I think it was on stage, it was either on stage or World Card Making Day last year when we were in Atlanta. There was a demonstrator on who's quite the artist and I cannot remember her name but she showed all sorts of pictures of places that she sees cards and as we walked around afterwards we were all looking at the carpet and the wallpaper and like oh that would be a good card base oh there look at that card front we could make so it is true you start looking around and you see you see what you didn't see before you started to get crafty all right, so I've just popped that on there. And then I'm going to use some liquid glue, and I'm going to put it on my cherry cobbler mat like this. All right. Okay, C 
see this was uh I used the other side of one of my aborted attempts. It took me a few tries to make my inside liner and I'm going to show you that in just a second. It's it's easy once you figure it out, but I didn't I wasn't sure what colors to put together and so I had to do a couple of tries. All right. We'll just get some liquid glue on there. And here we go. Okay. And there is the base of our card front. All right. So let's set that aside for a half a second. And I'm going to go ahead and make our um, sentiment. And when I find the piece of paper cardstock I planned to use, oh, there it is. Okay. So my sentiment comes from the Musical Seasons stamp set. Hang on a minute, you guys. Sorry, technical difficulties, just one minute. There it is. All right. And I used the marker to rubber technique for it. So let's do this. And all I did was, uh, yes, you're more than hat. Oh, hey, Karen, sold nine Christmas cards. Yay! Yay, that's excellent. Very good. Um, yeah, so I've got my early espresso um, Stampin' Right marker, and all I'm doing is just coloring the words on this sentiment. This is one of my favorite sentiment stamps that we had in the holiday catalog. I just love it. It's so easy, so simple. So nice. So I'll set up my Stampamajig. Like so. And then I'm going to stamp it at the bottom of this piece of Whisper White. Guys, when I made the first card, I had the heck of a of a time getting this sentiment done. I don't know why, it just bamboozled me every single time. Oh, Linda, that's sweet. Um, every single time I did it, my stamp of jig was straight, my strip of cardstock was straight, I'd stamp it and it was crooked. I'll bet you I did this 15 times. So y'all, cross your fingers, hold your breath, and say a little prayer that I can get it done this time. I don't know what in the world was causing me that much trouble? Mm -mm -mm. Craziness. It was just craziness. And then I'm coloring these little center dots with my Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Right marker. Which is going to turn out to be kind of a silly thing to do because I'm going to cover them in a minute with pearls. But, you know. Jeez. I think it's going to do it again, you guys. Maybe not. Whew. Gosh, that's relief. Okay. Now we'll cut that. You guys are sweet. You're really awfully sweet to me. And I appreciate it more than you'll know. Okay, so that's looking like a little too big. All right, we're going to use right there. Okie dokie. And then all I'm going to do, because I'm not, I want to keep one side longer so that I have some room to play with for a second. I'm going to bannerize this with my snips. Bannerize is, is a word. Just cut a little straight line right up where you see the middle. And then you can go from corner to the center, just like so. All right, so let's hang on to that. Now, you saw earlier I had already cut some decorations out. So.
So here they all are. I'll do a quick dry fit. God, they're so pretty. I just love it. All right, I'm going to let that kind of overlap both the bird and the edge. And then we're going to put a couple of these little pine boughs, my perennial favorite thing, like so. I like how that's going to look. And then we're going to put that like so. And like so. And you know, I think I think I might want well, I want my tweezers, so hang on, let me think about where those are. So I watched a really good video the other day from Ms. Sam Donaldson of the UK, who right now would be giving me a timeout and putting me, taking away my crafting privileges if she saw my desk, because it is so not tidy. It is so not tidy, y'all. Okay, I'm going to cut another one of these little pine baths pineberry things out of cherry cobbler. I'm going to do it in the middle of my inner light. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll just do it on a spare piece. So, yes, now would be a good time to murmur amongst yourselves. Murmur, murmur. Murmur, murmur. Are you murmuring? I don't hear any murmuring, people. I do not hear any murmuring. You guys are going to know before anybody else if Stampin' Up! ever gets rid of these pretty pine thinless, you'll be able to hear me crying from wherever you are watching me right now. I will be so sad because this is my very favorite thing ever. Okay, so I just made another cherry cobbler berries. Oh, you guys are good murmurers. Well, Sharon, I'm glad you learned something new. What was that? What was it that you learned that was new? I'm always interested. Okay, we're going to do three like that, and then our sentiment will go here, like so. So now I know I can cut that sentiment right about there. And that's just going to be a straight cut. And then I'm going to do one of my favorite tricks for when I don't want to mat. I really like stuff matted, but when I can't mat, or I don't want the extra matting, I just take my Stampin' Right marker and I take the brush end and I kind of lean it into the cardstock. Now here's a trick, let me show you on a, on a scrap piece because I don't want to screw up my sentiment. Okay. All right, Karen, see ya. Desks are supposed to be messy. Mm -hmm. Sure, have a good time, Karen, doing what you're doing. Okay, so here's a, a trick. You can make this edging darker or thin, or lighter or thicker. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I just lost the ability to speak. Sorry, thinner or thicker, depending on how you angle your marker. So if you just want it barely touched, go straight up and down against it. And that's that's actually a good thing to do to almost any die cut because it just kind of delineates the the edge and makes it crisper against your card front. But let's just say you wanted more, so you just lean it so that it's more horizontal against your card. So you can just go over it like so. See how it's making it darker? And it's kind of an art sometimes. That's why it's called art. And it isn't always going to be perfect. And remember, that's going to be wet especially if that's against a cut edge because that's going those uh, fibers are going to absorb that and it's going to take it a second. So, thin, thicker, thicker yet, thicker, thicker. All right? So, one marker and you can have all sorts of different looks there. Yes, Sue, the marker is easier to control. Also, it's really hard to get a mar a pad in your little banner ends but the marker is pretty easy. And that is not to say that it doesn't sometimes fail you. You know, every once in a while, it's gonna go wonky on you. And then you put an embellishment there. All right, so there's my banner ready. We'll let it set and dry, and I'm gonna pick these things up, kind of taking a mental picture of where everything is, and I'm gonna apply it with some liquid glue. The all perennial favorite liquid glue. All right. Assuming it will ever come back out. 
this bottle may almost be a dead soldier. Where'd that come from? Dead soldier. I know that people talk about beers and stuff like that as dead soldiers. It's actually not a very good thing to say, is it? Especially when you're in a country where everybody's at war. Huh. Yeah, I'm, I'll take that back. No dead soldiers, please. What I meant to say is this liquid glue may be almost empty. Fortunately, you don't need tons. But I am going to change it before we go to the next one. All right, so we're just going to set it roughly back where we had it. Like so. And then we'll put a couple of pine boughs. See if you get if you get tough with it, it'll it's gonna work. Kind of overlap the bird. This one isn't gonna look exactly like the original, but that's okay. Hey Arlene, yep, the pines are the best. I was sorry to see Christmas happiness going, but we do still have Christmas pines, so I'll probably live. But it's not gonna be easy. I'm probably gonna pout about it for a while. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of pouting, no, that wasn't a good segue, but you know, um, the Stamparatus reservation window opens on Tuesday, um, hmm, sometime in the afternoon, I believe. Miss Amy, are you still on? Tell us what time it opens. I've forgotten. And uh, we'll put that one there. I know, isn't that the prettiest die, Linda? Gosh, I love it, love it, love it. I haven't cut any of the other dies yet, but I know they are gorgeous. They just look beautiful. They just look beautiful. All right, and then we're going to put that there. And I'm not being too worried about where they come together because I'm going to cover it with my with my sentiment. Okay, so Paula tells us it's 2 p.m. Mountain Time on Tuesday is when the next Stamparatus window opens. And you're going to want to get in and do that. Now, it's not going to close again instantly like it did last time. It's going to stay open for a while, so you got some time. But if you don't have yours reserved yet, you might want to get after it when it opens on Tuesday. And all that information is on my blog, so you can check it and find the time that it's going to be open and give yourself a, put yourself a, an alarm. That's what I would do. Yes, ma'am, Jean, 4 p.m. Eastern. Oh, Sue, you got one, huh? Jeez, I did not get one. I think I was actually at work work where I couldn't, I couldn't log in right at the time. And by the time I got in, it was so gone. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right there. See how I covered up those junctures? Like that. And then I'm going to make what, I don't even know what this is called. I call it a Billy Moan bow because Billy Moan is where I first saw, the, saw this bow. This is linen thread, and this is a really fun, easy bow to make. You just start, you're going to use four fingers and then two fingers, okay? So I wrap it one two, three, four, and then using two fingers, one, two, three, four. And then I usually cut that, and then I pry it off. Good for you, Jean. That is lucky that you got it. Pry it off kind of squish it together at the center and give it a twist like that. Just one twist is good. And on one of my last videos, some very smart person suggested I use my ever so handy tweezers to hold that together. Clever! And then that makes it so I can tie my little bow around it. Like that. can't think and talk. Okay, there we go. And there is a Billy Moan bow. Good Lord. And I just tore it all apart. That's okay. We'll just fix it. 
See, nothing is unfixable really with paper, you guys. So all I did was turn that back around like that. See what, did you see what I did there? I actually tied my bow around my tweezers, <laughs> which was dumb. So all I've done is I've pulled that little end that's got pulled out back in, and I'm just going to tie another, another knot. This is kind of a loose, unfussy bow, and so it's very forgiving, and you can do quite a bit with it. And I think they're beautiful. I love them. They're one of my favorite things ever. So you can just kind of spread it out there and make it as, as sloppy or as tidy as makes you happy. All right? Whatever, whatever works for you. And I don't, that one right there is bugging me, so I got to find it, which means I'm just going to play with it here for a second. Pull, there we go. I found it. Okay. All right. Yes, Paula, you should try this. It's really not very difficult. Um, the trick is don't get the first, as, as soon as you get it done, don't go, oh my God, that's horrible. Give yourself a second, figure it out, and pull the loops around. It will get pretty. I assure you it will do that because that's what this bow does. That's the beauty of it. And here's another little trick that you can do in case you haven't figured it out yet. And one of the things that I like the most, this is in the side and has nothing to do with this card, but the crinkled seam binding ribbon, if you just make a bow with it, better than, better than this one's going to be. Remember this seam binding comes in several different colors and it's very forgiving. Just make yourself a bow like so. And you can see where I'm going with this, right? Even though it's not a very perfect bow. And then you can add it on top of the Billy Moan bow. Make the loops of your crinkled ribbon bow a little bit smaller than that. And use a glue dot to put it on top. And that, that makes a very nice treatment for the front of a card. Okay, but we're not doing that. Nope, nope, no, we're not. All right, so glue dots to attach Miss Moan's bow. so. Do it right to the edge of the sentiment. And I actually don't mind if my sentiment gets obscured just a little bit. I kind of like the fussiness of it. So there we go. And now let me show you one of the coolest things ever. Have you guys all bought your Stampin' Blends? If you haven't, let me show you another reason you want to. Okay, Stampin' Blend. Pearl Basic Jewels. Watch. Now I have Cherry Cobbler Pearls. These alcohol-based pens work perfectly. Remember, used to be, and, and well, still is, Sharpie markers work good? Well, guess what? Now you can make pearls in our colors. Whoa! And I'm just going to... Take a beat. Thank you, Paula. Wow, it's nice. Does it only work with linen or can you do it with thin ribbon? Um, I have had, mm, I prefer the baker's twine on these bows because I'm, I'm a little bow challenged, but I think you could. It just takes longer. Thin ribbon, I, t I tend to get anxious with it and impatient with it before I'm done. So so I like the Baker's Twine, the different Baker's Twines myself. That's just me. All right, so now I'm just going to pick up some of my recently cherry cobblerized pearls and intersperse them amongst the leaves and the flowers like that. Now on my original, I put a couple here like so. And I'm not sure I'm going to redo that, so I'm going to put the rest of these out here for a second. I think we'll use a large one here, too, just because why not? Why not? What do you guys think? Should I put one in the on the sentiment? Yes or no? I don't know. What do you think? Hey, Karen! I'm so glad you could join! I'm going to put one here. What do you think? I mean, what's the worst that will happen? 
I hate it and have to pick it up. That's the very worst that could happen right there. I just won't stick it real hard. How about that? Until I see if I like it. Woo, get back there. There we go. Oh, yes, I think I'll leave them. Okay, and there is my card front, y'all. So, let's do the inside. Let me show you the inside right quick. So, what I wanted was to recreate the look of these uh, white leaves on the wood DSP, okay? Uh, not on the sentiment, Pam said. Ah, too late, I've already got it. Oh, no. Uh, so, but I couldn't because I didn't want to have this dark wood DSP on the inside. That would have been weird looking, right? So I figured out a way to sort of make wood grained leaves. You ready? Okay. Here's, here's how you did. Take your hardwood background stamp. Lay it thusly. It's important that you say thusly when you do it. And then, remember our leaves from the beginning. Have those ready. And we're going to use the best, the best application I found was crumb cake and soft suede. And that was as close to the card front DSP as I could get. <clears throat> so... We're going to use crumb cake on this. This is called the kissing technique, y'all. I'm going to use crumb cake on these leaves. I'm going to use soft suede on the on the wood. Okay, here we go. So, just so you know, this is a good way to use these large background stamps, even if you're not doing the kissing technique. Just lay it down on your work surface and ink it like this, and then lay whatever you're trying to stamp over the top and give it a good press. Okay. So I've inked that up good, and now I'm going to get out my liner. Okay, I'm going to ink up my leaves. Again, this is crumb cake. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making the background of the leaves crumb cake, and then I'm going to add over the top some wood. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp down turn it a little bit and stamp down and we're going to see if that works. And I'm just going to put that in the corner like so. Hold it down for a beat and there you go. It's not very poosh. There is wood but you can definitely see the wood grain in there. So then I just stamp this off a few times to kind of clean it without cleaning it. Ink it back up in crumb cake. And there's still spots with the ink on it on my background stamp, so I'll just do that again. And put it in the bottom corner. Like that. And there you have that. Now, while I have it available and out and handy, I'm going to do the same thing to my envelope. Thank you, Verna. I'm glad you liked it on the sentiment. It's all, all personal choice, right? That's what we're all about, is doing our cards and making what seems pretty. So I've inked it in crumb cake. Kiss. Kiss. Stamp. Stamp, stamp. Ink it in crumb cake. I've still got some kissable there and just like that and set that aside so I don't do something goofy like you know smear it and then set this aside and just so you know guys I would never try to clean this in your scrub your stamping scrub no just run it under water and get it clean because that's a lot of ink on there alrighty so let's go ahead and finish up so I am now going to Locate my fast fuse. Here we go. Fast fuse my inner liner to its cherry cobbler mat. And then we'll put it inside our early espresso card base.
fixing to go. Okay, and then we will put our card front on with more stamp and dimensionals. have one more step. What's the last step, y'all? How did I clean my stamp and scrub? Oh, to clean the stamp and scrub, really all I do is I use warm water and I just run the warm water over both sides and just let it run until the water coming out is clear. And then I set it up on its side like this and let it dry. So typically when I need to clean it, I will do that so that it sits overnight because it does take a hot second to dry. All right, did that answer the question? I hope. All right. Envelope flap, yes ma'am. That is correct, Jean. Envelope flap. And it's handy because this is a card with DSP, so I don't have to stamp the flap. I can just cover it with DSP. Make sure I'm going straight on here. And then cut these little tails off here a little bit. And there's our card done. All right, so let me finish this, and then I'm going to step over to my other little spot right quick, and because I want to show you the cat, I want to show you the uh, the reason I made this card. I just want you to see it tonight, okay? Thank you, ladies. I was tickled with it. It took me a minute to get it done, because well, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, but you know. So I'm just using the same wood textured DSP that I used on the front. And pushing that up a little bit. Give it a good rub. And then a quick fussy cut. Like so. All right. And there is the envelope, complete with the dimensional. Those things are everywhere. All right, hang on just one hot second, you guys, one second. Okay, so I've told you all I've been on this diet, right? And so all of a sudden my Coldwater Creek catalogs are looking more and more exciting. And so I was really looking for, to, through it the other day and I came across this picture right here and I saw that and I did not see home artwork I saw I like to put one strip on the oh oh good idea Verna anyway this was the card I saw and when I saw this I saw wood textured DSP I saw leaves stamped with craft whisper white and the cable knit teeth behind a thin lit die cut. And so that was why I made this card and what I tried to recreate. And I think I came pretty close and I hope that whoever receives this will enjoy it. So y'all, I appreciate you spending the time. Thank you so much, Carol, appreciate it. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful week and get a Stamparatus reserved if you didn't already, and I will hopefully see you next Sunday. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, y'all.